it can be quite painful and that's the very last thing you need especially if you are cramping you know you don't want to be bloated and then you're also cramping like come on you don't need that in your life Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing fantastic. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Adagala and I am a certified personal trainer. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Do consider subscribing and joining this thriving, okay? Informative fitness YouTube family. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you a couple of tips you should implement during your period when anti-flow kicks in because I understand during that time of the month, a couple of ladies I find it absolutely impossible to even move their legs out of the bed and get to exercise and if that's you I totally get it no judgment it is totally okay sometimes the symptoms can be quite severe and quite unbearable but in this video I'm gonna be sharing with you a couple of things to implement to make the process a bit more smoother and possibly allow you to exercise while you are on your period the thing you need to realize is in between your ovulation and your actual period beginning which is normally called the luteal phase a lot of things happen to your body the hormones are all over the place number one secondly your cravings kick in you feel lethargic you feel slow you feel so helpless <laughs> Your feet swell up, your water retention goes up so you look puffier and bigger. Your energy levels go down because of the decreased estrogen in your system. So it's a whole lot of things and the premenstrual symptoms vary from individual to individual. So it could be different for you. Maybe you don't feel anything at all, but the rest of us are deeply suffering and please send help. <laughs> so the very first thing I do to ease down the PMS comes down to my supplements. And by supplements, I'm talking about my omega-3 fish oil my magnesium and my dandelion supplement so let's start with the dandelion the dandelion is basically a natural diuretic if you don't know what that is diuretics basically drop your water retention within your system personally when i get closer to my period my body tends to hold on to so much water i end up feeling so puffy and looking so puffy my midsection area specifically last week i was looking snatched but right now girl girl <laughs> what is happening you know so i normally take the dandelion supplement at least thrice a day during the week leading to my period and that at least helps me retain my water at optimal levels and i get to feel just comfortable in general however if you don't feel i need to get rid of your water retention it's completely okay this is what personally works best for me secondly let's talk about magnesium magnesium firstly is so amazing for its anti-inflammatory properties it also really helps with easing down muscle soreness if you're a girl who trains as much as I do, it restores the normal function of the central nervous system and also restores normal function of your muscle tissue. Magnesium also has this tendency of really relaxing muscles. And you know when it comes to your period and cramping, it is your uterus literally contracting and squeezing itself so that, you know, it sheds off the tissue. So I normally tend to take the magnesium a week leading to my period. Just the same as a dandelion. And that's going to be able to sort me out before my period begins. The trick here about the supplements and even the medication, if you have any prescribed medication to help ease down the pain during your period, you have to take it before the bleeding begins, okay? So magnesium is that girl. <laughs> The third supplement, as I mentioned, is fish oil, omega-3 fish oil. And this is really amazing because it shares the same properties as magnesium in that it has anti-inflammatory uh, tendencies within it. And fish oil also helps in easing down any joint aches if you are suffering from any joint aches, be it in your knees, in your hips, in your shoulders, right? If you don't do your mobility as well. <laughs> Fish oil will come through and ease down that uncomfortable pain. Fish oil really comes through in easing down the cramps. Now for the fish oil, I normally take it the day of, the very first day of my period until my period ends. Secondly, when it comes to easing down my cramps and training is avoiding a list of certain foods. The very first one being FODMAPs. If you don't know what FODMAPs are, I'm going to link a video up above about it. Please do get to watch it because FODMAPs really cause a lot of bloating. And and I don't know about you but my stomach is quite sensitive to those certain types of foods and the bloating can be quite painful and that's the very last thing you need especially if you are cramping you know you don't want to be bloated and then you're also cramping like come on you don't need that in your life you know 
get to watch the video and get to slowly eliminate the FODMAPs from your diet while you are on your period. While I'm on my period as well, I normally avoid fatty foods, you know, foods which are hard to digest. I normally avoid caffeinated drinks, not that I drink coffee or tea or any other form of caffeinated drinks to begin with, but I've seen a couple of people speak about how caffeine actually intensifies the cramps, so <laughs> no, I'm not going there. Uh, thirdly is avoiding any salty food and high carbs because that tends to really worsen the water retention while I am on my period remember that one gram of carbs holds on to four molecules of water same to the salt it really retains the water in your body and that's the very last thing I need while I'm on my period so a couple of anti-inflammatory foods which I implement within my diet while I'm on my period is brown rice avocados papaya oh, I love purples so much <laughs> chicken fish and liver to replace the lost iron I normally have my oats with uh, pumpkin seeds which also has this anti-inflammatory properties so get on it if you haven't yet already <laughs> I normally like my berries and my favorite one is bananas but banana is a berry <laughs> I don't like strawberries as much broccoli is a give or take because it is also considered as a FODMAP so I can eat it but not as much as when I'm on my period thirdly let's talk about exercising and personally speaking on some days, on some weeks while I'm on my period, I can go ahead and still continue with my program. However, if my body is in severe pain, imagine I'm gonna take those first two to three days off, or rather I'm gonna decrease my training volume and my training intensity. So for example, if I'm at the gym and I am weightlifting, then for those two to three days, I'm gonna opt for doing low intensity steady state cardio instead of going in with super high volume and super high intensity through weightlifting. If I am a out from home and I really and truly cannot get myself to you know follow through with my home workout program then I'm gonna go for a 20 to 30 minute outdoor walk honestly speaking the movement really gets the circulation in your body going along you know your blood is able to deliver the oxygen and the nutrients needed you know to your organs to ease down whatever pain is happening so even if you feel like you really really can't get some movement please just try and get up for even if it's a 15 minute walk imagine that's gonna be good enough and also that's gonna count as a mental release because honestly <laughs> some cramps are usually on steroids and it sucks and it's so painful and it, no one deserves to go through it but getting some movement is always better than you know just sitting there curled up in a corner on your bed or you know you're just feeling the pain and concentrating so much on the pain however however okay if you really 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 cannot get to move it's completely okay to take some time off and actually get some bed rest because i understand that some people actually experience a really painful cramps if you are suffering from this menorrhea then probably think about getting a medical perspective visit your gyna visit your medical doctor and get started on treatment okay okay lastly what normally comes through for me is over-the-counter medication so for me i normally work very well with brufen <laughs> brufen is the lifesaver no other medication has actually done the wonders which brufen has done for me i tried um I don't, I don't even remember the name they were so terrible that's how bad they were i even forgot about them <laughs> but brufen actually also has this anti-inflammatory aspect within it so it eases down the cramps completely actually on days when i get to take my brufen even before my period begins i'm able to still go ahead and train as i normally would and for some reason the brufen also decreases the amount of blood being shed for some reason i know tmi but i think there's a study which has actually done about that so if i do get to find it i'm gonna link it in the description box below so that you can also get to have a read and probably get on Rufen but with your doctor's prescription okay okay lastly as a bonus point i totally forgot to mention about maca root so i've been taking maca for about let me say a month now and my previous period was totally a breeze <laughs> you know i wasn't in so much pain i wasn't uh, as bloated the it wasn't as long as it normally would be so i don't know exactly 
well, the sense behind it it's just something which has personally worked for me so i'm not sure if it's gonna work for you but i'm gonna monitor my current period which is coming in about uh, 10 days or so <laughs> tmi i know but i do believe that the maca root uh, powder has made a difference in you know the severity of the pain and that allows me to actually get up and get moving and get along with my day and you know just keep it moving exercise do what's required of me because i understand at some point this thing gets really distracting and it literally disables you maca root has worked for me if it has worked for you or if you are taking maca please let me know in the comment section down below and let's talk more about this in the comments share what really works for you or what doesn't work for you let me know if you work out or don't work out remember no answer is correct or wrong ultimately you have to listen to your body and do what is best for you at that very moment so with that being said guys do not forget to hit the bell and subscribe and and I'm gonna see you in my next video. Bye-bye.